want to worship him out of the blessings that he has given us. We, come, we want to come and honor the Lord with all of our substance and with our first fruits of all of our increase so that the blessings of heaven can be poured out on us more. Just relationship. It's all relationship. It's just about relationship. Coming before the Lord and saying, Oh, Father, thank you for what you have blessed me with. We give a tithe, and then we have an offering, and then, you know, we just say, Here am I, Lord. I want to make sure I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. And so sometimes, you know, we feel like just coming and crawling in the offering basket and just giving everything. You know, and there's just, there's times, you know, he, he says he gives bread to the, to the bread for our needs and seed to the sower. So there's bread that is for us and then there's seed for the sower. But when we see the, the need in the kingdom and we see the work that needs to be done, Father just so many times just puts it on the inside of us because we're so lost in him that we just step out way beyond where we can go and just pour into the kingdom just because it needs to be done. Just because our life is an offering. Because we're so wrapped up in kingdom business. And oh, hallelujah. Did everybody get to see the clip of kingdom business in Nepal? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the heathen, for our inheritance. We thank you, Father, that you have given us the heathen. And we ask you, Father, for the increase, the increase, the increase, the increase. Lord, we thank you that you just touch all of those people that came to you. Father, the military, the police, oh God, that were touched by the power of your precious Holy Spirit. We just thank you, Father, for the increase, Lord Jesus. The, the entire government will just take Nepal as a Christian nation in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father, for what you're doing in Japan, for what you've done in South Korea, for the move that you... You, you, how you move by your spirit there and father now Japan our focus is on Japan hallelujah Japan hallelujah. Japan for your kingdom oh God we thank you Lord father we agree we touch this thing right now we touch Japan Lord we just we just envision it and father I thank you Lord as I saw a vision of the other night of Buddha a statue of Buddha and I just saw it crumble and turn to dust turn to powder Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, just like Josiah took all of the, of the wicked prophet's bones, the prophets that prophesied lies and led your people in to ungodliness, how he dug up their bones and he burned them and he crushed them to powder. Lord, in the spirit, we crush the lying powers of darkness that's held Japan back. Father, we crush those powers in Jesus' name. And we stand here together as your church in unity and we press in father for your glory to be seen in japan hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. praise you father hallelujah. praise you father Thank you, lord. praise you lord god hallelujah <laughs> whoo jesus whoo father the glory of your presence we want to uh give everybody a, a chance to come and worship the lord with what he has blessed you with and just get excited get excited about what we're doing around the world and let's get excited about the building that uh, we're supposed to be in and there's been some hindrances but that's okay we're going to stand together as a church and we're going to press into this we're going to press in and we're going to take our inheritance and you know it might be it might be a good idea and i think it's beyond a good idea for every person to just take some time on saturday some people could take the whole day some people a few hours but take some time that you set aside to fast and pray skip at least one meal fast and pray and ask god to break every hindrance and to remove man and their plans outside of the way so we can just go on with kingdom business because we are exploding with vision we are absolutely exploding with vision 
and the enemy would like to hinder that vision, but we want to move forward. And so come on, together, together, in Jesus' name, we move forward. Decision is made. No more weighing back and forth in Jesus' name. Decision is made in Jesus' name. We command it to come in. And I just appreciate, you know, we've got Thursday, we've got Friday, and we've got Saturday. But, you know, it would just be awesome if people even collected up in little groups. You may collect up in just your family or whatever and just spend some time together praying that this be done, that there's just nothing else to, to just slow us down because there's some glorious things getting ready to happen. Vision is exploding on the inside of us. We're going to harvest. We're going to harvest. We've, we've got some plans downloaded from heaven to harvest San Diego, California for the kingdom of God and to give everybody in the place lots to do in the kingdom so you don't feel like in any way that you are left out. Because if you, if you get left out of harvesting, then you really need to feel left out. That's the only time you need to feel left out. If you get left out of harvesting, then you just fight your way into the front. You be like the woman with the issue of blood that says, look, I'm not getting left out of my healing. I know where the healing, where the healing virtue flows, and I'm getting in. So you just get on board, and you get in. Hallelujah. Get ready. Get ready to move out in God's kingdom. But right now, first of all, we need to press in that there is no hindrance. So as you're all coming to give and worship the Lord with your finances, I want to encourage everyone to encourage everyone else and bring the lost and anybody else that we can pack into the place Sunday morning because we are going to be blessed with Don Clowers coming. We're excited about that. He'll be here Sunday morning for the morning service and the evening service. And so just get ready to come, be blessed, be touched by the power of God. And, and we'll see you Sunday morning. Bring somebody with you. Encourage someone to come. And as, um, is everybody coming to give their offering or did we already do that? Did I miss it? I was busy, I was busy um, preaching while you guys were giving your offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, that's awesome. Well, we want Brother Stewart to come. This is the gospel. This is the good news that has been preached unto us that we have believed and we have received. And all the extraneous nonsense that tries to push its way in and come between that fellowship, we just cast it off. We say, Lord, I'm a fellowship with you. I'm a fellowship with you. And out of that fellowship, I'm going to see the gospel preached. We've heard it preached here many times. How is the gospel preached? I'll tell you how the gospel is preached. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. This is how the gospel is preached. This is what we do. This is what happens. Where does it come from? It comes from the Holy Ghost. It comes out of the fellowship of the mystery that Christ is in us and we are in Him. This mystery of the gospel, this incredible, powerful fellowship that we have been given by the Holy Spirit. It's so wonderful. All, all week long, I've been walking around singing, Holy Ghost, you're wonderful, Holy Ghost. You're wind blowing strong, blowing from heaven. Is what I, just because it just, it's been there in me, I've just been saying, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I just need more of what you do. I just, I need you more. I yield to you. Come honor Jesus in my life. Come bless the Father through my life. Holy Ghost, do these things in me. This is such a wonderful blessing. What an access to the Father. Whatever your need might be, whatever it is that's got your mind and your heart at the moment, whatever it is that's captured you that might be other than the Holy Ghost, whatever pain you're suffering, Whatever thing has happened, whatever thing you think you can't get out of, whatever it might be, he's got an answer. He's got an answer for you. He's come to give it to you. By his word and by his power, he's going to answer your every need. He's got an answer for every need. Jesus, our Savior, bought and paid for the answer to your need, whatever it might be. That's what we're here for. They're here to meet the needs. If one part of the body suffers, all the body suffers with it. So we can all suffer? No, so we can see it get better. <laughs> we want to make it better. We want to see it healed. We want to see that pain removed. 
We want to see that body touched. We want to see that spirit given peace. We want you to be confident in God. It's understanding the hope that we have. This word is so great. I was in church on Sunday morning, and, and my son said to me, Dad, you know, when I first got to church, I thought you need to notify your face that you were really happy to be there. Well, the fact of the matter was, I was thinking about something that had me kind of weighed down. I was sort of overwhelmed with something, and it just really wasn't going like I wanted it to go, so I really didn't get into it much at the, fart, at the start. <laughs> and uh, we... Um, Kind of, we were late because they closed down a whole bunch of roads in D.C. For the, uh, for the Marine Corps Marathon. You know, a whole bunch of people worshiping the marathon instead of worshiping the Father. But, the, you know, we couldn't get into D.C. and we had to go all the way around. But we weren't going to miss church. Wasn't going to happen. Not going to miss. So we got all the way around. We got in there. So we missed the worship time. And, and I was a little disappointed. And uh, mine was weighed down with the needs here. You know, I had postponed my flight because the baby wasn't born until early, early, early Saturday morning. And we, Grace and I made the decision, prayed. We said, we're just going to postpone them. Called everybody, tried to fix everything so I didn't have to come back to work on Monday. And, and we got there. But I get to church and I'm just weighed down. I'm just kind of weighed down with all these things. And I was thinking about all of you. I was thinking about how I desperately wanted to be with you all, how I needed to be here. You know, there's all these things on my mind. And uh, so I got in there, and yeah, I wasn't really flowing in the Holy Ghost when I got there. And I, I could have said it's because the, the nobody else was either, but uh, it, <laughs> that would have been wrong. It would have been wrong. So you know, it would have been wrong. So I got in there, and, you know, the preacher got started, and it was slow going. It was slow going. I was struggling, like, really? Are we going to start preaching, or are we just going to do this? Then he got going. So how did I get here? Because he talked about hope, and I was so touched deep inside my spirit by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost touched me. It didn't matter where you're at, what kind of church you were at, whatever you're doing. I was there to honor the Father. The Holy Ghost came and touched me with that message of hope, and I just went, oh, Lord, yes. You know, they just got it up there to find it. It looked like Pastor Mark's definition of hope. It was beautiful. It's beautiful. I just, yes, got me, got me engaged and excited. He started talking about the hope that's in Christ Jesus. And I said, yes, it's an expectation. It's a confidence. It's goodness. It's all these things. And so I was, I was blessed. The whole point is you can come to church and feel like you're just weighed down with all sorts of cares and all sorts of wonders. But I tell you, the Lord will meet you if you just cry out to him. You just cry out to him. If your son looks at you and says, Dad, notify your face don't get mad at him. Son, what do you think? I told you that. You know, whatever. <laughs> Just obey. Just obey. Yes. Amen. I'm so happy to be here. Because <laughs> Jesus is here. And so it's good. Yeah, it was, it was just, it's just wonderful. But it's a message of hope. This message of the kingdom. Message of the kingdom. So we're going to talk about it a little bit more. I want to I dig into some scriptures, but First of all, I want to pray, and I want you all to pray with me. I want us to begin to pray that we will live a life that goes from glory to glory. Not a life of ups and downs, living in the valleys. But we're going to go from glory to glory. This is what God intends. So we're here tonight. Everything that happened yesterday and all the rest of today doesn't matter. We're really not worried about tomorrow. But tonight we're going to go into the glory by the Holy Ghost. And then you're going to go out from here and we're going to live in that glory. And we're going to see God fulfill all of his will and all of his purposes in all of us. In that fellowship in the kingdom. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to be struggling to try to figure it out. We're not going to be struggling to try to explain it. We're not going to be trying to write down three points and a few other things that explains to people exactly what it is that we're trying to do. We're going to say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. He'll take care of it. I don't know all of your needs. Holy Ghost could reveal them to me, might reveal some to me. doesn't matter. The Holy Ghost knows every one of your needs. So we're going to pray. I want you to pray like you mean it. I want you to pray with all your heart. Don't try to follow me. Just pray. Shout, sing, 
Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with the understanding. Whatever it is comes out of you. That's what we're doing right now. It's house of prayer time. It's not time for you to be worried about who you're following. So just pray. Okay? Holy Ghost. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for the prayer of the Spirit. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the shout of the Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the glory of all that you do. Lord, I thank you that we yield to you. Lord, that we cry out for you. Lord, that we say yes to you. Lord, in everything we say, Lord, I will pray. Lord, I will find that place to pray. I will find that place to fast. I will call out to you, Lord, and I will say, Your will be done, O God, in this earth as it is in heaven. Father, you get the glory. You have your will be done. Lord, you accomplish your purposes in us, O God. Bring it to pass. Father, we thank you for the glory of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the peace and for the love and for the joy. Lord, we thank you for all that you have given unto us. Lord, we shout and say yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, we will pray. Yes, we will cry. Yes, we will give. Yes, we will do. Yes, we will yield to you, O God. We will follow you all the day long. We will say, Lord, is it this one? Is it that one? Lord, where can I minister? Lord, where can I preach? Where can I pray? Where can I, pr can I touch? Lord, what person can I heal? What person can I preach to? What devil can I cast out? Lord, you show me by your spirit. Lord, I will not give rest unto you. I will cry out to you with all my heart. I will say, Lord, I will have your purpose in my life and I will not be denied in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the shout of praise, the shout of amen, the shout of your goodness, the shout of your glory. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We'll have it. We'll have it. Yes, Lord. We'll have it. Oh, God, my God. You are so good. You are so good. Hallelujah. I got to get rid of this. I just keep playing with it. Father, we thank you. You're so good unto us. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, my. Where shall we go? What shall we do? What shall we do? We, we quoted the scripture. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Memorize it. Put it on your window. Put it on your mirror. Put it in front of your eyes. And remember, this is the kingdom of God. He dwells in you. He has all righteousness. If your problem is sin, he'll forgive you. He'll wash you clean. He'll take it out of you as if it was never there. If your problem is you need joy because the world is so depressing and life's got you down and everything's against you, the Holy Ghost will fill you with joy. He'll do it. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is agree. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord, I want your joy. And you'll have joy. You want peace? It's the same thing. Just say, Lord, Holy Spirit, come fill me with the peace of God. Jesus always walked in peace. He was in perfect peace. The scripture says, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Lord, I want to keep my mind stayed upon you that I might dwell in perfect peace. Lord, this is your promise unto us. And his righteousness and joy and peace given unto you all comes by the Holy Ghost. Just say, Holy Ghost, you're wonderful. Holy Ghost, your wind's blowing strong. In my life it's blowing. It's blowing from heaven. This is, this is Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, so wonderful. Oh, God, he's so good. And the Word of God is so wonderful. So now I've got to go someplace else. Always happens. Always happens. Romans, I think it's 14. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yep. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And then right after that, 
right after that, do to do to do to do to do. Chapter 15. Chapter 15. In verse, chapter, in verse 4. For whatsoever things were written before times, they were written. There's many things in this book for you to learn from. There are many things that the children of Israel suffered through for an example unto us. Many times it wasn't a good example. It was an example of how to do it wrong. But there were many times it was an example of how to do it right. And you could see the difference. They'd be flowing in the anointing and, Je- and Jehoshaphat would go out and let the singers go first and they'd lay their weapons down and sing praise unto the Lord and he'd wipe out the enemy. Hezekiah would take the letter of the evil king and he'd lay it before the Lord and say, look what he said about you. He said, you were just like all those other dumb idols that didn't save their people. He said that about you. And the father went out and slew 185,000 Assyrians in one night. Okay, he'll take care of this. It's done correctly as much as it was done wrong. You know, we talk about the wrong. It was done. But these things are written aforetime. They're written for our learning. Learning is good. Scripture is good. You ought to be studying the Word of God all the time. You ought to be reading it all the time so that you're learning these things. That we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have confidence. We might have hope established within us. We might have this confidence. Now the God of patience and consolation, that's comfort, the one who comes to comfort you, grant you to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. Verse 1 said, we then that are strong ought to bear those that are weak. This is what we're here to do with one another. Those of us that know how to pray are here to bring along those that are struggling to pray. Those that are full of joy are here to bring along those that are struggling with joy. Those that are full of peace are here to help calm down the ones that aren't full of peace. We're all here together that we might join together, like-minded, and we might come to that place where the Holy Ghost is all in all and does everything He wants to do and ministers to every single one, as we see. You watch the video from Nepal, and you see Pastor Mark preaching. He's preaching a simple gospel message. Every single one of you could preach the same message. You ought to know it as clear as you know anything. But what's there is a unity of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is moving through the life of an obedient vessel and all the others that have come in behind him and agreed together, all the people into Paul and all the people praying for him that have agreed together. And that unity has come together and he begins to preach the message and there's a whole bunch of people saying, I want to be part of that. And they come running. And they come running. It's powerful. So we're here today that... Not a single one in this place, not a single one watching would be left out, would be brought in together. So that you'd be like-minded, just like the Father, who's the God of of patience and comfort. He wants to grant unto you that you be like-minded one toward another. That one toward another you be patient and comforting. We're so judgmental sometimes. Don't like the way you do your hair. Don't like the way you dress. Don't like the way this. or Don't like that. Or how you acted. Or what you did. Or how you were mean to me. Or whatever it might be. Instead, we're supposed to be these. Patient with one another. And comforting one another. Why? Why? That you may with one mind, verse 6, and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One mind and one mouth. Can we here in this place find that unity of the Holy Ghost that we with one mind and one mouth praise the Father? That's what we come together for every single meeting. It's the purpose we have every single meeting. It's why we follow the leader. Why? Because we with one mind and one mouth want to glorify God. We're not here to be... Pastor Mark used to say, independent combat units. You know, we're not here to be that. We're not here to be, oh, you're, you're great and you're great and you're great, each on their own, doing their own thing. No, we come together with one mind and one mouth. One mind, one mouth. My personality, my opinion, my ability matters nothing. It has no purpose in the kingdom. And yours either. When we come together, it's all about the Holy Ghost and Jesus. That's it. That's it. 
We can get fixated on what our senses tell us, but that's not what it's about. It's about the things that God does. You can feel that. You can feel the wind blow. You can feel the fire burn. You can feel your heart getting touched and going, oh, God, I need, I, Lord, forgive me. I need to do a better job. Lord, I wasn't walking in joy today like I should have been. I, I, I went into the office today and first patient, I started yawning and I went, oh, my Lord, help. What happened? I was, I was jet lagged and didn't know it. You know, and you, and you start to just feel overwhelmed, like I just need to get through this. And I'm saying, Father, why, why don't I just stop for a minute, lift my hands in the air and say, Lord, I love you and I praise you. I thank you for strengthening me. And that, that's simple. I'm strong again. I'm moving again. Everything's good. It's just, that's all it takes. When you're overwhelmed, don't start thinking about all the good reasons why you should be. Oh, I have reason to be tired. Yeah, you probably do. But think about the one who comes to uplift you. He comes to strengthen you. He comes to fill you. And pray for one another that this be the, one, the things that happen. Now, wherefore, verse 7, receive you one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. How did he receive you? He found you when you was a mess. He found you when there was nothing about you to be looked at and thought of as beautiful. He found you when everything about you was sin and destruction and misery and pain. It's described in many places in the Word of God. It's an ugly description. He found you and he loved you. So in the same way, receive ye one another as Christ received us to the glory of God. Well, how was that? Last time I was here, blessed share with you i was talking about the faith of christ jesus where he believed that when he sowed his life he in faith sowed his very own life that he might rise from the dead and give life to whosoever would believe and out of his one seed that died in the ground he sprung up from him as many as the sands of the sea people innumerable who would believe and be changed and be made like him and have the same life that he had so that the life of Christ Jesus, the same life that he lived, now lives in me. The same life. Not a different life. Not he was an orange and I'm an apple. No. I, he did it that way, I'm doing it this way. No. He yielded the Holy Ghost, I'm going to yield to the Holy Ghost. He did the will of the Father, I'm going to do the will of the Father. He cast out devils and healed the sick and raised the dead and preached the word in power and with signs and wonders, and I'm going to do the same. The same life of Christ Jesus now dwells in me by his faith. We talked about that. Well, here, when it says this, when you receive one another, we're receiving one of them as Christ did. He looked at you when you were dead in your mess, and he saw what he could do with you. And he put within you the very life of Christ Jesus when you called upon his name and brought you into fellowship with him. So we, in the same way, receive one another. We don't look at one another and say, well, I just wish he wasn't here. I wish she wasn't here. Why does he even come? Whatever it might be, whatever it might be, that only comes from evil. That's what that is. That's evil. The thought crosses your mind, said, that's evil thought, cast it out right? We come together so that every single one be brought into the same fellowship that we're in. We receive one another the same way Christ Jesus received, knowing that when the seed of the word of God goes forth and touches your heart, it's going to bring you into the same fellowship that we all share one and each other together in Christ Jesus. This is how we receive one another. This is what we do. This is, this is our purpose. When we're out in the streets, and we're talking to people, and we minister to somebody, somebody who knows the Lord, we're encouraging them and strengthening them to follow after him with more passion and to know more of what he's done for them. And when we meet somebody who doesn't know Jesus, we're calling them, even as he called us, to come into this fellowship. We call them by our very life, by everything that we do, by how we live, by the love that we express. And we don't look at one another and go, well, you're not expressing love like I think you should be. We don't do that. If, I see, if we see a need, 
what do we do? We receive it as Christ Jesus did. We go to it and we hug it and we love it and we pray for it and we believe God for great things. And with great patience, the ministers of God labor to see this outcome, the fullness of the manifestation of Christ Jesus by the Spirit. It's a good, wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Oh, my, there's so much good here. Look at this, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost, that you can abound in confidence through the power of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that good? That's just wonderful. He's a, he's a God. He's a God of hope. And he wants to fill you with all joy and peace. It's, it's the same. It's basically the same thing as was in chapter 14. Well, praise the Lord for the announcements. Because that's just, that's just wonderful. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, everybody. Everybody. We got, it's everybody. Oh, my, he's so good. Titus. I wanted to preach to you a little bit out of Titus. Because I want you to take this message of glory to glory, and I want you to live it out like you've never lived it out before. Not by your own strength, but by the strength of Christ Jesus, by the love of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. So let me start at the beginning, Titus chapter 1. We're not going to read the whole thing. I, but you can go home and read the whole thing. You know, when he wrote this to Titus, Titus didn't sit down and read three verses and then leave it aside and come back the next week and read the next three. Just so you know, he read the whole thing. Because, you know, it's like a letter. So he read it. Anyway. <laughs> Paul, a servant of God, and he was, an apostle of Jesus Christ, he certainly was, According to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. You know, anybody that says there's no godliness in the kingdom of God, it's clueless. In hope and confidence of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but has in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me, according to the commandment of God, our Savior. Another place it says, through the foolishness of preaching, God has ordained that men would be saved. Preaching seems foolish sometimes. Why do we preach? Do we preach to convince with sound words and logical arguments that people would understand and that they might come into agreement with our political position? No, we do not. That is not how we preach. How do we preach? We want to, we desire to better and better and more and more preach the Word of God by the Holy Ghost that it would have all the effects that we were talking about earlier. That's what we want. And it sometimes, I mean, some of the most powerful preaching you, you hear doesn't even necessarily sound logical when you first hear it. I mean, it's it just because the power of God is so great, it just hits you. Like just like a fire, like a wind, it comes upon you and go, wow, my life's been touched and changed. It's amazing things. So this, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began. When, when he recreated the earth in the first place and made it brand new, and all the language that speaks of a redemption in Genesis chapter 1, and he redeemed it and brought it back, and he set it there, and he, and he said, let there be light on the earth, and then he brought forth all the wonderful things and, and made it all brand new, and then he set man in it, in a beautiful garden, and had a purpose to fellowship with us. Fellowship with Adam, fellowship with Eve. This was his purpose. And just because it seemed to get set aside and take a detour for all of these years, God's purpose has not changed. And it's important that you know that. God, that cannot lie, promised this eternal life. Remember, eternal life is not just length of days. 
It's not just endless days. Eternal life is abundant life. Eternal life is overwhelming fellowship with God. That's what eternal life is. Eternal life, it's a bigger word than just length of days. It's fullness of life. When I got to see the grandbaby for the first time, there's a joy that jumps up inside of you. It's an experience. I highly recommend it. It's an experience. It's just so wonderful. And it brings you back to all the experiences. I remember when, the, when my first son was born and all the subsequent babies were born. How wonderful that was. You know, which takes you back to how do you get there? It goes back to the, I got married one day. How wonderful that was. You know, and then you start thinking of all the good things in life. Well, in the same way, I, I often remember how God called me out of darkness. You know, I have joking ways to say it and simple ways to do it. But re- regardless, in detail, he took me from the darkness in which I dwelt. Of all the sin that is unmentionable and all the things that filled my mind and all the wrong thinking and the stupid ideas and all that, he took me and he brought me into his marvelous light. So when we remember these things, when we see this stuff and we, we think about what he did, he promised this fellowship and we recognize he takes us and brings us in. And all these experiences that we have, all these things that we go through are to, to remind us, to remind us of how good he is. Now, I'm going to skip to, there's just so much in here. I promised I wouldn't read the whole thing. Let's, um, let's look at verse 16. He's talking about these ones that they don't have what we have. They profess that they know God. They say that they know him. They say that they know him. But in works... They deny him. They're abominable. It means they're doing just disgusting evil. And they're disobedient. It means they just refuse to obey the commandments of God. They refuse. And unto every good work are reprobate. It means that they can't even, they can't even come close to a good work. They're so reprobate from good works that it's just, they're so separated, there's just no way to bring them together. You can't find anything good. This, he's talking about these things, about these people. And it's important that we get this, because as we get later in the book, we're going to see he's going to refer back to this idea. We don't want to be these people. Just not at all. So let's skip ahead to uh, verse 6. Um, it's verse 7, really. Verse 7. In all things, it's just going to encompass everybody because he was specifically talking to women, then he's talking to young men and whatever, but let's just encompass everybody. In all things, showing yourself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. That means you need to know the doctrine, doesn't it? You need to know the doctrine of God. Gravity. That means that you recognize that your words matter. You recognize that the way you act matters. The things that you do matters. You recognize this. You, it's in another place it says that the women be grave. And you think, what is that? Like a grave, you know, a hole, you know, what is grave? Grave means that you take seriously everything you do. Okay? That's pretty intense. Sincerity. Sincerity. No hypocrisy. You speak what you know and you speak it with conviction and you speak it in truth and in love and sincerity. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. Many people need to learn how not to just turn it on. Turn it off. Just turn it off. You're better off speaking a few words that are grave and sincere and sound than speaking many that are the opposite. So sometimes when you see a need, you want to explain it. You want to explain to people. I mean, I explain things for a living, so I can explain with the best of them. And you can sit down, and we can explain it to you. Here's, here's your problem. This is what you did. This is what you did then. This is what's happened there. This is who did this, and this is who did that. And you give it all. And you know what? In the multiplicity of your explaining, it loses its gravity and sincerity and its soundness many, many times. Don't try so hard. A single word, a word fitly spoken is powerful. A word to the wise is sufficient. 
just speak a simple word. You know, it's like, you know, my son just sits to me and says, it's just all about the Holy Ghost. He didn't explain it to me. He said, it's all about the Holy Ghost. That's all I needed. I'm wise enough, thank God, he's given me his wisdom, to hear the word of God and say, you're right, it's all about the Holy Ghost. I don't have to explain it. He didn't have to explain it. We knew what he was talking about. And then suddenly you say, Holy Ghost, fill me up. <laughs> you just, you get, fills you up. It's good. So, sound speech cannot be condemned. And he that is of the contrary part, he that is contrary to sincerity and sound speech, he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed and can find nothing evil to say about you. Now, there's going to be times when people speak evil of you and it's completely undeserved. There'll be times. But you know the first thing I do when somebody tells me that I, I offended them or I hurt them? I go to God and I say, Lord, what could I have done different? Lord, how could I have done better? How could I have spoken better? Father, forgive me. I, I had no desire to hurt anybody. I had no desire to create trouble. It was not in my heart to do that. But Father, teach me to have soundness of speech that, that I may not be a cause for men's offense. Because here, I don't want to be the one on the contrary part that's ashamed and people have many evil things to say about me because there's, I deserve them. But, you know, if that's me, have mercy upon me. And the same way Jesus brought you into the kingdom, he'll bring me into the kingdom. Let's love one another. Let's bring one another into the kingdom. Exhort servants to be obedient to their own masters. Exhort those that work to be obedient to their own bosses. And to please them well in all things. Not talking back. Don't talk back. It's, you always want to explain yourself. Not purloining, but showing all good fidelity. In other words, not skimming a little off the top for yourself. That's really what purloining means. And that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. It's wonderful. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It's appeared to everybody. It's many people don't know what they're looking at, but it's appeared to them. It teaches us something. That denying ungodliness, we deny it, we step away from it, we push it, we no to ungodliness. And worldly lusts, no. We should live soberly. We should live righteously. We should live godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed confidence, that blessed hope. We're looking for that. That we're just we're, that's what we're after. It may be something that's not seen, because hope that is not seen, it's not hope. Because if you already got it, you're not hoping for it. I am not hoping that this iPad will show up here today. It's here. But if it was being brought by my family because I forgot it, I'd be sitting here in hope, knowing that they're gonna bring it. They're gonna bring it. I'm believing it. I know it's gonna happen. They'd show up and they'd bring it to me. I was hoping for it. That's what hope is. Hope is not. Wishful thinking. Hope is a confidence in God. So when we talk about these hopes that we've been looking at, when we talk about these hopes, it's, we know God is for us. We know his intention is to give us eternal life, both abundant and long. We know that his intention is for us to live righteously and godly. We know that his purpose for us is that we would live the very same life that Christ Jesus lived. We know this. that's our hope. That's our hope. So when we talk about this, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm looking for his appearing tonight. Not just coming in the clouds. I'm looking for his appearing right out of here tonight. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for him in you. I'm looking for him in me. I'm looking for the appearing of Christ Jesus. I have great confidence that he will. Why do I have great confidence he will? Because it's his purpose. And all I have to do is say, yes, Lord, I agree with you. I want your purpose. Now, you can do it. It, it pays to do it with a lot of passion. It pays to live your life that way, because the way it tells you to live your life that way all the time, that no evil be spoken against you. But we're looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself an absolutely special people a peculiar people, a very specifically treasured people, a people, it's like when you look and say, I don't want just any diamond. 
I want that particular, peculiar diamond. I want that perfect one. That's what really that word means. Sometimes we get the idea that it means weird. It doesn't mean weird. It means particularly perfect. Okay, think of that. It's a particularly perfect people, zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. I want good works in my life. I've been commanded to have good works in my life. My faith is seen by the good works that are in my life. I want good works, it tells me right here, to have those. Hallelujah. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. He was writing to Titus as the pastor over a people. And he was telling him how to get the job done. And so he tells them, speak, speak, exhort, bring everybody along, and rebuke with all authority. It's important. I've been rebuked many a time, and I needed it. Chapter 3, verse 1 says, Put them in mind. Put you, I'm going to put you in mind here. I want you to think about something. To be subject to principalities and powers. To obey magistrates. To be ready to every good work. Keep it in mind. To speak evil of no man. Wow. Speak evil of no man. There's a lot of people doing a lot of evil things. A lot of evil deeds, a lot of evil words. You might even be thinking of some of them right now. Don't speak it. <laughs> speak evil of no man. Wow, that's, that's intense. He's telling us to do this. Why? Because we want to live the same life Christ Jesus lived. We want to live the same life he lived. Not some other life. Same one. And be no brawlers. Don't be fighting with people, arguing with people. But be gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Let me just put it simply to you. I'm just gonna, this is how I received it in the airplane on the way home. This is what I received of God. He said basically this. Lay down your life. Lay down your life. As Christ Jesus called you into the kingdom, in the same way that he did that, you call others into the kingdom. How did Christ Jesus call us into the kingdom? He laid down his life. He didn't do his own will. He didn't do his own way. He didn't have his own purpose. He wanted to, to do the things Father wanted him to do, but in the end, he put all of his trust in the Father. When he cried out in the garden, and as I understand it, it's clear in the scripture, he was not praying, Lord, I don't want to go to the cross. I mean, I would have been. I, I, I'm certain of it. Lord, I don't, want, I don't want to do that. That looks painful. He, that wasn't his prayer. His prayer really was, Father, save me from the evil one who's trying to keep me from fulfilling your purposes. But Lord, not you, my will, but your will be done. Because there's no way in my own strength I can get this done. It, he, didn't, he, he couldn't. There was nothing more he could do. He'd been obedient. He'd done everything the Father told him to do. But there was nothing he could do to make it happen at that point. He had to wait upon the Father. And the Father made it so that that incredible trial of where the devil's trying to kill him, trying to get him to sin, something, anything, to stop the cross. Jesus was heard. In that, he feared. He feared God. He hated evil. He was heard. And he, because he was heard, he made it to the cross. And because of that, he laid down his life for you and me. It was his purpose. So you, you... Lay down your life one for another. So that's what I heard very clearly. The whole message was to get to this one point. The Lord God has called us to lay down our lives in every way that Jesus did. In every way. No different than he did. That's why he said, you've just married a wife or you've just got some oxen or you've got all, he said, there's all these things. And you read them carefully. I tell you what, every single one of them, as far as I'm concerned, is a good excuse. 
They are. They're good, I mean, they're, they're good reasons. They're not silly reasons. They're not, look, I wanted to watch TV. It's, it's not the reason. These were, these were good, solid reasons, and some of them, I mean, the Word of God even tells you that some of these things, you know, exempted people from war and exempted, you know, all kinds of stuff. Jesus said, look, none of that matters anymore. You follow me, absolute obedience. You do what I do. You say what I say. You come and follow me. Forget everything else. I mean, that, it's that intense. He says, you lay down your life. Wow. You might say, I can't, I, I, I'm still struggling. I'm struggling because I'm having trouble with this oppressive thing that just keeps getting me and makes my life miserable every day. Good. Come here. Throw yourself on the mercy of God and cry and say, Lord, I need you. I tell you what, he'll receive you. And the same way that Jesus received every single one, he brings us in and brings us to the point that we can follow him. And he is merciful and he is long-suffering and he deals with us. And even when we cannot hear, when we will not hear, even when we have it figured out the wrong way, he's dealing with us patiently, loving. And as we, one another, lay down our lives, one for another, in this place, Laying down our lives to pray for one another. Laying our, down our lives to love one another. Laying down our lives to just come into agreement with one another and bring us all into this glorious thing. This is what we desire. This is what we want. This is why we're here. And we, all of us that are here right now, we need to be this immovable, unbreakable group of people so that God can flood us with the needy and we won't fall apart. When the needy come in, suddenly we become one of the needy again. I mean, it's good to be needy. It's good to be broken. It's good to be contrite. It's good to be desperate. It's good to be hungry. It's good to be thirsty. That's, all, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about we want to be so unbreakable and love one to another that everybody else just kind of fits in. That there's a place for them to come in and there's a place for them to be comforted because we don't fall apart when things get stretched. I remember Joseph Deskin preaching in Sunday school many, many years ago and talking about the net. And if you got broken strands in the net, there's holes where the fish get out. So the net goes to pick up the fish and you got a whole bunch of them falling out through the holes. Sometimes I wonder, there's, there's moments when it feels like the net's all one big hole. You know, it's, it's, we're, we're just we're struggling with it. No, we're going to be together so that everything is bound together in love not in rules, not in, you know, mandates from the stick, but in love, knitted together a net that will catch fish and keep them. Now, believe me, every one of us was a fish that was caught. Every one of us is a fish that's been brought into the kingdom. Every one of us is a plant that's been planted and raised up. Every one of us has been watered and tended. I mean, a lot of good things. Don't get, me, don't get the wrong idea. This has been a wonderful, 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 wonderful church of the Holy Ghost for many, many years. But he wants to knit all of us, not just a little net of three or four people or one person who's all united with the Holy Ghost, bring it in, but the whole church united together in the Holy Ghost, and we're bringing in a harvest. We're bringing in a big catch of fish. And we're, and we're, doing, we're doing it in obedience. We fish all night, catch nothing. Jesus didn't say, you guys are such losers. I can't believe you didn't catch any fish. God, I'm hungry. You, you didn't bring me any fish. You guys are just terrible. He never said that. He just said, hey, hey, guys, cast the net on the other side of the boat. Doesn't that seem silly? If you think about it, I mean, the fish are all around the boat. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. No, it wasn't the other side that mattered. It was the obedience that mattered. It was doing what, the, what the, the master said, and when you do what the master said, you get a harvest of fish. When you do what the master said, you get the manifestation of the kingdom. This is what we do. So the Father taught us, the Holy Ghost ministers to us, that we come together in one place, in one accord, and we see the power of God manifest and Jesus revealed to meet every need. We see this. 
And we've watched it happen. We've seen people healed and we've seen people set free. And we've seen people strengthened. And we've seen people raised up to do great things. We've seen children raised up in the Lord to do marvelous works. We've seen people come in whose lives were messed up and see them changed. We've seen people who couldn't speak a sentence without sounding silly and suddenly they're preaching and seeing people touch. I mean, we're seeing these things. We don't ever want to lose sight of what we're seeing. But the vision is for greater. The vision is for bigger. Sometimes we, we, we miss this. You know, we're being told, come on, we can do more. We can do bigger. We can do better. And you're thinking, what is all this stuff we've been doing? Oh, no, it's all wonderful. It's good. But the vision is for bigger and it's for better and it's for more. So we're not, we're not forgetting all the good stuff that's come in the past, but we just don't dwell there. Lord, help. So, I just got to get to the, the final analysis. Verse 5 of chapter 3, not by works of righteousness. After the kindness in verse 4 and love of God, our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's about the Holy Ghost. It's what it's about. It's not about something else. It's not about our great doctrine as much as it's about the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. It is good for you, Jesus said. It's good for you that I'm leaving and they're thinking, no, it's not. We love having you around. We were so sad when you died. And now you're back. And now you're going to leave again? I mean, just think about it. The, the God incarnate in the flesh dwelt with them for three years, ate with them, slept with them, shared every trial, tribulation, everything that happened, all the glory. They were with him for three years. And then he died. And they didn't understand as much as he told it to them. They didn't get it. It didn't fit their doctrine. It didn't fit their understanding. They struggled. And then he rises from the dead. They don't even believe it. But he convinces them. So now they do believe it. And now he says, I'm good. it's good for you. I'm leaving. It's good for you. That's just crazy. They were absolutely overwhelmed with these things. As he's telling, it's good for you that I'm going away. Because if I go away, if I don't, he said it in the negative, if I don't go away, the comforter can't come. But I like to say it this way. If I go away, I'm sending you the Holy Ghost. Let's just get right to the cut to the chase so people don't get confused in, in negative words. I'm going, sending you the Holy Ghost. So he says here, he says, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. He, Jesus through him gives us the Holy Ghost. His whole purpose is to give us the Holy Ghost. Why? Why? Because the Holy Ghost, the one that comes and administers the very life of Jesus in you. The Holy Ghost, the one that comes and puts in you Christ Jesus, is the one that comes and manifests out of your belly Christ Jesus. He's the one that comes and out of your belly causes to flow the rivers from the Holy Ghost, those rivers that go forth and do the works of Christ Jesus. This is by the Holy Ghost. It's all about the Holy Ghost. Ah, that, being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the confidence of eternal life. We should be heirs. We are heirs. We are those who have received heirship. Why? Because He left. He, he left. Look. When my father passed away, I like to use that term, it's when he left this life to go on into reward in heaven because he called upon the name of Jesus late in his life. Thank God. I'm so blessed about that. He made us heirs. And I was his heir, but I didn't receive of what he had to give until he left. And when he left, there was an there was an inheritance that passed upon my brothers and my sister and I. We received an inheritance. That was, it was always there. And we were always theirs, but we received it when he left. So what is the inheritance that Christ Jesus has left unto us? It's 
The Holy Ghost. He's given us the first fruits of our inheritance. Now think about this. As great as that is, it's even greater in the final analysis at the end of the day. But he's given us the first fruits of it. He's given us the earnest of it. When you read that scripture, it says, the earnest of our inheritance. The earnest is the first part. It's just the little first part that you get. The Holy Ghost is the earnest of it. It's the first part of the inheritance. Isn't that amazing? And you know what the Holy Ghost is going to manifest? All of the inheritance. It's going to manifest all of it. And it's going to be even greater. But we are made heirs according to the confidence of an everlasting life, an everlasting, abundantly full, and the life of God in us. Every time you read eternal life, every time you read everlasting life, just remember this. The life of God. How big is the life of God? How, bi- how wonderful is it? How great is it? It's the life of God. It's not just endless days. It's the life of God. That's how I think about it. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that you affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful. Have you all believed in God? Be careful. Be careful. It says here to be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Maintain good works. Wow. That's that's intense. Manifest your faith by your good works that you do according to your Father in heaven. It's good works. We are not saved by works of righteousness that we have done. But because we are saved, we manifest good works. And, and how do I get good works in my life? Everything that the church is called to do. You're here that you might be strengthened to manifest good works in your life. The work of thanksgiving, the work of praise, the work of, of joy, and the work of peace. All the works that you're called to do. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Give thanks in all things. Rejoice evermore. All these commandments are given as good works. That's that's where good works begin. Because it isn't by your much rule keeping, necessarily. Albeit, when you do the things that we're talking about, guess what happens? By nature, you keep the law. By nature, you do things contained in the commandments of God. And you look at yourself and go, how did that happen in my life that suddenly I'm doing all these things right? I remember that I had lived a life fairly ignorant of the Word of God. I didn't really know the Word of God well. I knew a few little bits and pieces, but really didn't know. And when I got born again, I became hungry for it. And I began to read it. And I've, I've even said here before that it's, to me it's really kind of hilarious how the first Bible I ever read was called the Story Bible. Some woman named Pearl Buck had taken the Bible and written it all out as literature. And that was the Bible I read. And, and it was just like reading a novel from beginning to end. And, it, you know, actually not such a bad thing. But I'm sure a lot of the doctrine was messed up and a lot of the ideas were all, you know, because when, just watch what they did with the Ten Commandments. You know, they just mess it all up. But, I read that, and I began to just was hungry for the Word of God, right? I didn't know the Word. But I remember discovering, when I got to Point Loma, because God sent me there, when I met the people God sent me there to meet, when I started in the Bible study with then Mark Spitzberg and now Pastor Mark, Mark Spitzberg and chemistry student, having a Bible study, and I went over to the house. I showed my son the house the other day. Drove him over there and said, right there, it's right there, Cable and Orchard, that's the spot. And we went to this Bible study. I began to hear the Word of God. And one of the things I've really never talked about before is I remember noticing how many things in the Word of God I was already doing and didn't even know it. It was doing it because it seemed right to me. Now, I'm not going to tell you everything I did was right. I'm just saying that there were many things in my life that I began to look at the Word of God and go, Wow. I'm already doing that. Now, the deception is you were doing it by your own strength. No, the reason it was happening is because the Holy Ghost that was given unto me was manifesting Jesus in my life, even though I didn't know the Word of God like I do now. Isn't that amazing? That's a wonderful experience to look back and go, 
wow, look what the Holy Ghost did in my life, and I didn't even know. He brought that to me. It's the same way many people deal with sin. They get preached Jesus, they go on their own, and suddenly they don't want to do the things they used to do. You don't have to tell them, okay, here's the, here's the list. Don't, don't do this, 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 this. Okay, you got it? Don't forget. Don't do this, 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 this. You don't even have to do it. You bring them into the kingdom the same way Jesus brought you. You lay down your life. You love them. You minister to them by the Holy Ghost. You strengthen them by the Holy Ghost. You encourage and exhort them by the Holy Ghost. And guess what happens? They start doing this and not doing all these by the Holy Ghost. It's a wonderful thing. It's good to hear preaching. Preaching tells you to speak no evil of no man. It's good to hear it and go, yeah, I don't want to do that. But you don't do it in your own strength. You say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to not do it. So whatever the need, we're going to pray now. Whatever the need that you have, whatever you came here with, that it was so overwhelming that you feel like it got in between you and God, we're going to break it in Jesus' name. If you feel like you need more than that, you can come up to the front. We'll pray with you in, in faith, in the Holy Ghost, and we'll see it happen. We're going to see your need met. You ask for Jesus to meet your need, Jesus will meet your need. You ask me to meet your need, I'm going to struggle. I can't meet it. Jesus will meet your need. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for a people who are so hungry for you that they are going to be so knitted together every day, every service, every week, more knitted together in love that we might minister the same unto everyone who comes in here, that everyone would know how much you love them, how much you care about them, how much you desire to fellowship with them, and that they would know it so much that they would want to tell everybody else about this great love that they've received. Father, every need, every power of darkness, every lion thing that could even possibly still be here, we break it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we tell it to go. Father, you loose everyone that we say is loosed. And Father, I thank you we say everyone in here is loosed of everything that is contrary to your word. And Father, when we pray it now, you do it in heaven. Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost to see men and women set free that they might serve you in love and joy and righteousness and peace in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So if you do want prayer, come up, sing. Otherwise, respectfully minister to one another, love one another, hug one another. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful to me. You are so good and pure. Your life is so everlastingly good. 